Okay, so this is going to be gearing in a McLean Bolter. First thing we need to do is uh, inspect the heading before pulling in. So we're going to put our jacks down. There we go. And uh, turn all our lights off. Three point contact on the way out. It's really easy to slip and uh, hurt yourself off of these things or uh, get jammed up and just bang an elbow or something and hurt yourself right off the bat. So uh, master switch off if you think you're going to be leaving your machine for any amount of time. And let's uh, inspect the heading before entry. So check and make sure your 600 volt power is off. Check your ventilation board so you know how much air should be coming out of there. Check and make sure you've got signs. I like to do a walk at, uh, in to ensure the travel way is safe and clear. Make sure there's nobody broke down on the road. Uh, that nobody has gotten in there before you and maybe tripped and fall, fallen, uh, hurt themselves or, you know, lost their light on their hard hat and they're stuck in the dark and they can't signal you. There's a lot of reasons why uh, you should take a physical walk in and uh, inspect with your eyes before you just tram in with your machine. So I like to follow my cable all the way in, check the vent tube, check the lower walls, make sure there's no loose, nothing's changed since the last time you were in there. Uh, making note of any hazards you might come into or that might be on the ground when you're driving in. So we'll check, and make, check our cable that is there and where it is. So you see, make note of available gear and supplies. We're gonna screen fast, slow resin. I've seen rebar in here. I see rocked oil off to the left there. I see we got another pile of screen here. More rocked oil. Okay. Oh. Uh. Oh, I did a bull thing, I guess. I'll come and try and support this wall here. Okay. Hmm. All right. Road's clear. Bring it clean. Oh, seat belt, lights on, jacks up. <coughs> you got to make sure that uh, your your function is an auxiliary, so you have uh, you can control your jacks. There, auxiliary to drive, release park brake, put it into gear. So you can see now backing up with uh, your drill forward, your your visibility is very limited. So this kind of view is just kind of reinforces how important it is to actually walk in and inspect the heading before you drive in. As we're driving in, I got the boom on the the boom mount there, and the drill steel's been removed, uh, just in case the chain is to break on the drifter when you're going downhill. That that drill steel can come right through the cab, so it's, it even has a little placard there that says "Always take your drill steel off before tramming." And uh, you can see I got some 10-foot rebar up there; they don't fit in my uh, my rebar basket. So I've just got them set up on the top there and I'm driving really slow and hopefully I don't lose any. So in the previous scene you've seen that uh, there was a lot of rebar that were painted yellow. That's how we identify the, the 10 foot bolts and uh, the extended ground support. So you can see I'm 
looking with my light over to the right there, I remember that there's a, a cable laying along my wall. And uh, I don't want to run that over or get into it at all. So you can actually see how, how tight um, some of the places are from this perspective too. The, the vent tube even with the twin duct is right on top of the machine. Uh, it's important that before you pull in that uh, you take care of the, your, your pump suction hose and not run it over because uh, if your suction hose gets crushed you can't pump water some of the places naturally make water as well as drill water and uh, you end up flooding your road out and if you got holes in your boots or whatever reason it sucks walking through a water hole so I like to articulate outwards and it makes the exit of the cab uh, quite a bit larger and you can get in and out of the machine a lot easier and because I'm just plugging my cable in I just put one one jack down and a park brake and uh, that's the equivalent of I think is uh, of two wheel chocks but but even better so a nice three-point contact there Ooh, lovely there's my pile of rebar so Pull some extra slack out for this cable. Just pull it straight out, and uh, it's it's a lot easier than pulling it to the side. And a lot of the time, the the cable reel assist does not work on the machines, so you got to pull it out by hand. So we'll make sure that the, none of the threads or the prongs are are muddy and they're nice and clean. Uh, it's really important that the threads are nice and clean and not warped, otherwise uh, you can have quite a hard time getting these uh, plugs to thread together, especially if you're just doing it by yourself. Um, they do make little wrenches for them. You know, they're handy, but they always seem to get lost. So it's nice when, uh, wherever you're working, some places have little mounts where these can bolt into the wall and you just hilty them into the wall and they, they mount there and it's, uh, it's a lot easier to push the plug in and then thread it. You don't have to take it off, you know, push it into the ground here and struggle. stuff's heavy too. So this is really important uh, to give a good backlash on the cable. So yeah, yeah. Very, very important. Very, very important. So the idea of this is uh, you give a good backlash on your cable and if you drive away it's not going to pull your panel off the wall or pull your plug apart. So just like the subtitle says there. So it's nice when they even have like a proper bolt. Oh. Try and keep the rebar off the road. So seat belt jacks up. It's a good idea to watch your cable, make sure your, your backlash is working properly and that your, your, your strap doesn't break or your rebar doesn't rip off or fall off and usually you can tell if you're driving away and your cable reel's not rolling or turning then uh, you know, there might be something wrong you better get out and look hopefully you're not pulling the panel along behind you.
Yep, park brake, jacks down, diesel off. So I turn the diesel off as soon as possible just to help preserve the air quality, especially on some of the older machines. They, they can be pretty smoky and I mean, some people might argue if you turn them off, they may never turn back on. But, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm already plugged in, I know that I'm going to be able to get 600 volts and uh, be at least be able to bolt. So we're going to hook up our water now. Okay, water. Water. Yeah, just water. So a lot of times if you're bolting on diesel, uh, not all of the equipment has a compressor, so you do have to actually hook up mine air to some of these pieces of equipment. Need a wet check on water, but it's nice to have them on the end of your hose. If they are on the end of your hose, you can swap it to air if you need to, and you got a whip check right there. Now we uh, move the power cable off the road. This is so uh, nobody runs the cable over and uh, mechanics and loop guys or shift bosses or whoever can come right up to the back of your machine and not have to worry about running over your live power cable. So it's important uh, to make sure your panel is off when you come in and then you know it's off when you're plugging it in and when you're handling it and uh, you throw it off the road as you wake your way back to your panel and then you can turn your water off on the way back to or turn your water on sorry and then it's uh, the least amount of walking possible and it's the safest way to handle the cable so I just tie it up on the side here keep it out of any water tying it up with something non-conductive is ideal too even if it's just rope or some cap hooks so you can notice how dark it is without the, the work light there. That's why it is so important to keep your tools clean. Uh, a lot of guys, it's nice to have a gear bag in the heading that you can hang beside the headers where everybody knows where all the tools are and then you don't have to stumble around in the dark looking for muddy tools laying on the ground or something. At least stick them in the screen, keep them in the same area and then uh, it makes the workflow a lot easier. If you have a problem and you have to fix a hose, you know, you know where your hacksaw and your bolt cutters and your punch lock all are. A little bit more cable to tie up here. Making a career out of this, I see. This is a good example of why it's nice to, to have a panel that you can plug a jumbo cable into and for both ways and then miners can move it ahead uh, and you don't need an electrician to, to bump your panel ahead and uh, yeah, it, leave, it makes uh, discharging or shutting off your machine and locking it out uh, much quicker and more efficient. You don't have to walk all the way back to energize or de-energize. Like, you know, if I tear out, if I tear down and come out of here, I have to walk all the way back, turn my panel off, walk all the way back, roll up my cable. It's, it eats up a lot of time just walking back and forth, making sure that you're doing things in the right order. And you know, if you got to walk all the way this far back just to shut your water off, it's, it's very time consuming. If you have any problem, like a fire or something like that, you got to go all the way back after you hit your fire suppression and turn your panel off or your water hose blows and you know there's, there's a lot of reasons to keep these services up ahead so don't stand in front of the panel and don't look at it when you throw it if they do explode you don't want to get it in your face this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine I really like drop headers even if it's on a hose or you got a one-to-one -one valve like uh, I was looking at on my way out of the heading 
but uh, this seems to be a pretty common thing now is, is, is people don't understand that it's hard to reach up there and if you don't have a ladder or scissor truck you can't turn your water on unless you got like a 10 foot bar or something so it's it's nice to even have like I said a one to one so you can shut it off on the ground even if it's right behind your machine is ideal but uh, if you have an air and water drop head in a central location somewhere close to the working face you hang your gear bag there and then you know it's it makes it very fast and efficient to to do services and keep your gear clean and organized so then one of the last things you want to do is hang your sign saying that uh, you got bolting and there's energized cable ground support progress like so yep thumbs up okay and I'll walk all the way back in So, you know, this being in real time is, I would imagine, should be helpful for planners and engineers and stuff. You know, we do these little white cards that say what goes on during the day. It, it's hard to describe what our problems are of check marks. And to see that this video is 21 minutes long and it's just me driving into the heading and setting up. And I'm not taking, I'm not being slow, but, you know, I'm trying to do things properly and it's, it's time consuming. And it's just because simple things are being missed, like air and water is up close, having the panel up close, it saves a lot of time. So if I was to gear out by myself, there's a good chance it could take up to, you know, 20 minutes for me to walk all the way back, tear my water down, reel my cable in, except I won't have to walk in. So you press and hold the reset, three seconds, and you'll get some power. Again, don't look at your power pack. Boom. There we go. That's a good sound. You gotta hold your proximity switch. Oh yeah, turn on the console first. So when your boom, it's got proximity sensors on it and if it gets too close or in certain positions, you get this uh, proximity sensor and it kind of locks it out so you can't crush yourself or wreck the equipment. So to unfold the boom, you gotta hit the bypass button as well as folding in the boom. So. Well, I'm going to clean this deck up, get it ready for bolting. We'll go from there. So you can see I got my deck nice and clean here. Ready for bolting. Need some drill oil. Try not to make an environmental disaster here. machines won't start drilling or uh, if the rock drill oil is empty so if you're having problems getting hammer or something or rotation to, to stay on or even turn on at all it's a good chance it's the rock drill oil
So I got everything put away in a spot. I got extra drill bit. Actually not. I need that. I'm gonna need that. Bit bag. Got my wrenches. For lunch. Extra fast and slow resin on deck. I got my rock drill oil. There's some little tools here. The resin I'm using. All my eight foot rebar. I like to count my plates before I get started and then I know every time I use a bundle then that's 20 or, or 10. Extra dollies, bolt cutters, lots of grease. Get all my rails up. Drop the steel in and put some bolts in.